Hello and welcome to this month's Hempfield Happenings. I'm Gretchen Hopkirk. And I'm Emily Moser. We're starting this month's show off in Frederick, Maryland to discover this town's rich history and bright future. Frankie looked at one of Frederick's remaining links to the Civil War. Alex got a rich taste of a local soda store. And Sarah hit the pavement to see how a new business is rolling towards the future. To take a look at Frederick's rich history, Frankie explored the National Civil War Museum of Medicine. What we have here is the only surviving wall tent from the American Civil War. Frederick, Maryland is filled with rich history. The National Museum of Civil War Medicine preserves historical artifacts that helped brighten the future of medicine. The museum was started in 1996, and it was a private collection that belonged to Dr. Gordon Domond. He decided that people really needed to know about Civil War medicine, so he, along with a few other collectors, got together and decided to create this museum. It's a great location because it's kind of a central point for a lot of things history-wise for the town of Frederick, because this was a major medical center during the Civil War. It'll kind of sound familiar if you've ever ridden on an ambulance because it's still in use today. There's archaic old ways of doing medicine that because of the Civil War and, and its tremendous impact, we're going to see a drastically altered American medical civilization after the Civil War. It's going to push the ball forward. We're going to go from old ways of doing medicine to more scientific ways of doing medicine through the really hellish Civil War. The road in front of the museum, that's the old National Turnpike. It's the oldest paved road in America. It leads from Baltimore and uh, uh, actually heads out west through Hagerstown. During the Civil War, both armies took that road heading towards the Antietam National Battlefield. I call downtown Frederick a really living history classroom. You're walking down these streets right outside this museum and you're transported back in time. Some of American history's biggest heroes have passed down these same streets. And I hope that they continue to have that focus on historic preservation moving into the future. So with one eye kind of moving forward and one eye looking back and knowing where we've come from so we can have a more successful future. The National Museum of Civil War Medicine provides a fulfilling background on the rich history of Frederick. For Hemfield Happenings, I'm Francesca Barrett. Alex popped into a unique soda shop in downtown Frederick. The North Market Pop Shop brings back a traditional concept in a modern style. We have over 300 different types of soda that's from across the U.S. and there aren't very many places that have that. We change up our sodas a lot. Uh, we have local creamery ice cream which is pretty fantastic and probably the best in Frederick. We just try to do a lot of different things. We have a few people come in who've never been in the shop before and it's, it's pretty overwhelming. We have a lot of sodas. Um, so we do get a lot of questions like what's the favorites or um, what kind of root beers do you guys recommend? So yeah, people love it, people love it. The pop shop connects past memories to the present. We're just trying to bring in from across the country people's memories and favorites. We get a lot of people that come in and are just really happy that you know, Frosty Root Beer was the root beer that their dad gave them, and so they re get very excited to like give it to their kids. Mainly, you know, it's sort of a new, modern version of the old soda pop shop. The future looks bright for the pop shop. So what we're doing is we're just, we're gonna probably put more stuff online, um, and maybe get out a little bit more into the community, bring the sodas out to different events and things. And we partner with uh, the candy store that's two doors down, uh, to do uh, talks. So just kind of get out there and get it known that you know you can find all of your favorites. The North Market Pop Shop hopes to continue the rich history of soda stores for generations to come. For Hemfield Happenings, I'm Alex Weaver. A new business recently popped up in Frederick. Sarah went to see what was brewing. 
Gravel and Grind is a coffee shop located in a historic building and it's one of the many bright spots for Frederick's future. We're a, um, a bike shop that specializes in bikes uh, that are about exploration and experiences uh, and we happen to have a coffee shop inside of our bike shop and we think that the coffee kind of helps uh, bring people in and expose them to our bikes. So Gravel and Grind is all about um, exploration, adventure, having fun, just leaving your cares behind. It's about get outside, read a book, drink some coffee, explore the woods. Um, that's, that's what we're about. Although Gravel and Grind is a new business, they are taking advantage of a historic building in downtown Frederick. It uh, dates from the late 1800s. It's a granary, uh, which is, um, was, was used to store uh, grain. Frederick is a very uh, happening, hopping place right now, and finding a location proves very difficult for new businesses sometimes. And um, we saw this, this building. It was a cafe before, a very popular cafe. 17 years ago was the first time it opened. Gravel and Grind takes a unique spin on the classic cafe concept. Coffee and bikes have a cycling have a long history together. Back in the 40s and 50s, and even before that, the pros uh, didn't. There wasn't any doping then. They drank shots of espresso. So there's this long history of bikes and coffee. Uh, when I was at my other bike shop where I worked, customers would come in after a ride. They just want to share and talk. So giving them a space where they could do that, uh, we thought would be we could be a good thing to provide for folks. Although Gravel and Grind is in the heart of a historic town, it has many plans for the future. I would say, like a lot of uh, like historically rooted towns, um, there, there there has to be some balance in, be in between like preserving the historic district and the history of the area, as well as moving into a sort of an era and a zone where the people who are inhabiting the town don't feel like they're living in this sort of um, archaic area. I think they're they're making great strides in that. You know, until you understand history, you can't solve the problems of the future. And um, you know, a lot of people come into our shop and say, "Oh, you have a bunch of vintage stuff here." And uh, I think those people are kind of missing the point. And the point is, is that uh, you know, understanding history and understanding um, old ways of making things are the keys to figuring out how we how we can deal with the future. So yeah, we're, we're gonna keep on our current track unless something explodes in our face. My, my big hope and dream is that it just continues to grow and become a place for people to come and gather and, and uh, go out and participate in events together and share that love of cycling and, and good coffee. Gravel and Grind will keep its historic charm while pedaling towards the future. For Hempfield Happenings, I'm Sarah Moser. Communities are built upon and thrive because of small businesses. We walk down East Patrick Street to talk to store owners about their histories and future. We have been in Frederick for about seven and a half years. We've been a comic book shop in Frederick for about 33 years. You know, it's, I've been here for 20 years and it's always been a great, great place. We have lots of ideas and there's lots of growth that we are exploring. Definitely just to add more clothing upstairs here now that I have a bigger space and more boots. I'll be putting in more boot shelves and just expanding that collection as well. Well we're always trying to grow in Frederick. You know it's a, it's a small town but it's really um, especially the downtown area is just growing 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 so we're just trying to grow with it. Thanks for watching. We will see you again in Atlanta for the Student Television Network Convention. The portion of the show that you just saw was created in only eight hours by the senior Comtech students back on January 21st in Frederick, Maryland. Their new show was based on the Frederick County motto, Rich History, Bright Future. The junior class also had the opportunity in Frederick to create a short film. In eight hours, we needed to create a five-minute film based on the prompt, Key to the City, a pun based off of Francis Scott Key, who was from Frederick. A prop key was also required to be used in at least three shots, with some specific dialogue as well. Here is the film, The Key to the City. I don't know, Zach's been really weird and like kind of distant lately. You don't, you don't think he could be cheating, do you? I really don't think he is. My guess would be it's finals week, we're all super stressed. He's probably just really nervous for all of his finals that are coming up, especially that Russian thing you've been telling me about. He seems to take that super seriously. That's true, and it's a big test. Okay, I'm gonna, I should probably meet him. Yeah, I need to meet him in a couple of minutes for for coffee, but thank you. And I'll tell you how it goes. I mean, hopefully, 
hopefully it's just finals. Just remember what I told you. So, how's your day been? Um, pretty good. Um, I'm gonna go to get some napkins for you, okay? O okay. <laughs> Why are you looking at me like that? You're giving me that look. Who's Taylor? My friend. My partner. Partner for what? Russian class. A hood. Can you explain to me this text that you got from her? Have, is there something you're not telling me? Um, yeah. She said, have you told her yet? What are you, what are you hiding from me? I'm not going to tell you. You know what, Zach? We've been having a lot of issues lately, and I think that it might be best if we just take a little break from each other. Yeah, I agree with that. That, that was really easy for you. Yeah, see ya. Okay. Yeah, Zach? What's up? Yeah, I'm, I'm walking to my car. I'm at the left end of the parking garage. What do you want to talk about? Yeah, I think we probably should talk. Where are you? Zach? Are you... Oh my gosh, Zach. Zach, are you okay? What, what happened? Are you... Who are you? What do you mean, who am I? I'm Paris, I'm your girlfriend. I was just with you a couple minutes ago. I think, I think you might have a concussion. Maybe we should, we should take you to the hospital. I'm Let's... fine, I'm fine, I'm gonna walk it off. No, I had a concussion in fifth grade once. My doctor told me I'm not supposed to do that. Let's try to jog your memory to remind you of where you are, okay? Okay. Okay, okay let's go this way. Zach, do you remember we just got coffee here like 10 minutes ago maybe? No. Alright, let's go back to the campus. What about this place, Zach? Do you remember? This is the first place we met, right here on this bench. You had this key, and when I told you my name was Paris, you called it the key to the city and you gave it to me. And that's the first day we met and we started dating. I, I'm, I'm starting to remember that. Good, so, good. Is there anything, do you remember anything else? I, get, I gave you a key. It's about Zach, you need to wake up. Oh, why? We have our Russian final and Dr. Ivanov's in like a half hour. And you let me sleep? Well, I thought you needed a nap. No, I needed to study. What kind of girlfriend are you? I, well, we need to go, so... Okay. Okay. Better not fail. Oh. Oh, oh I'm hi. Sorry. I'm sorry. Um. Do you guys know where Dr. Ivanov's room is? Yeah, we're headed there right now. Oh, okay, cool. Have, cool. have I seen you before? Um, it's my first day, I don't think so. You do look kind of familiar, actually, though. Then where did you get the key necklace? Oh, um, well, my name's Paris. It's nice to meet you guys. Um, when I was a little girl, my grandpa gave me the necklace. Um, since my name's Paris, he calls it the key to the city. Um, it's just kind of cute. It's like a running joke in my family. But you do look familiar, though, so... Oh. It's sort of... Okay. Okay. Well, we can show you that. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Before we went to Frederick, two teams of four students competed nationally in the STN Challenge. They had three days to write, film, and edit a story also based on a prompt. Here is a short film based on the prompt, The Power Inside, followed by our news feature, United Nation.
How's it going? Oh, you know, just going to class. And how's that going for you? I'm dying. That's a little melodramatic for uh, 8.37 in the morning. I'm just so tired. I don't know how you make it through the day. You must have some kind of power inside of you or something. You really want to know my secret? Come with me. Drink this. What is it? Lightning fast espresso. Once you have this inside you, you'll have the power to do anything. Coffee? You want me to drink coffee? Yep. Give it a try. Okay. How'd the coffee work out for you? Well, I finished my term paper. I ran 26.3 miles. I got a black belt in jujitsu, arm wrestled with John Cena, solved the Middle East crisis, read Bomi Dick, planted a garden, started a nonprofit, and mastered the didgeridoo. I knew you had the power inside you the whole time. Really? You believed in me? No! You had enough caffeine to kill an adult male hippopotamus. Well, uh, I'm gonna go practice the didgeridoo myself, so, uh... Oh, and uh, all that caffeine might cause you to crash later, so just be careful. Hemfield High School in Lannisville, Pennsylvania is a proud school, 2,400 students strong, that shares the commonality of being black knights. I remember even first year here uh, at Hemfield, um, just students just like love me and I love that you know you have the feeling you feel that there are certain elements that are, that are very very different now from when I was a student in Hemfield uh, but at the same time there is still that that sense of unity that no matter where we come from no matter um, whether it was within the district itself or students that moved in from other areas at, at other times whether it was elementary middle school or high school uh, there is still that that purely I'm a member of the Hemfield family. I'm so proud of our Hemfield family here and I really do look at it as a family because I think when I hear the voices of our students share how they are happy here, that doesn't happen just because they come to you know one class that's a specific ESL class, that's because they are warmly welcomed. In Mrs. Gosserud's English as a Second Language program, the unity of being a part of Hemfield is evident. Here at the high school, just, just in our high school, to know that we have approximately 96 students, 85 in instructional classes, and some that are what we call, you know, with backgrounds but not in instructional classes, just at our high school that come from other countries. So from 1994 until 2015, we have grown just at the high school from that 24 to 96. I mean, that really says something, I think, as far as the numbers. Um, and once again, the excitement of just being able to be a part of a diverse global community it's a blessing to us all. And I think majority of our student body is as acceptable as it is because we have a really good Minus faculty. Six, like, it, I think, eight, honestly, the attitude plus, of the teachers is reflected five, also five, on students. And I think that helps a lot of students grow that way as well. Uh, see that, like, even though people are different, they are still people. What unites us? What what? take seven elementary buildings, two middle schools, an alternative education center, um, and one high school. What unites us? And I think it, it really comes down to the experience that we are all a part of. Um, learning about different cultures and being with students from different perspectives, different culture, different skin color, different uh, sexual orientation, whatever that is, um, I think that slowly, just like everybody else, like, like United States as a nation, we are slowly moving in that direction where we are more and more acceptable of each other. In its own way, the students and faculty of Hempfield create one great united nation. For Hempfield Happenings, I'm Joey White. In December, two students in Farmdale organized a blanket drive for local animals. Kayla Torres spoke with the students about their project. <laughs> Two students at Farmdale Elementary School initiated a blanket drive to help keep animals warm in local shelters. Two fifth grade sisters, Colleen and Caitlin Murphy, came up with the idea of holding a blanket drive at Farmdale. 
We were watching a show called Dog Tales with our dog, and they had this idea where they put bins in different places, and Colleen said that we should do that in our school. The girls have been collecting blankets for a few weeks and plan on donating them to local shelters. We're just letting them have the blankets so that their animals are warm during the winter. Blanket drives like the one at Farmdale benefit local animal shelters like the Lancaster SPCA. We are independent nonprofit, so we're not connected or affiliated with any other SPCAs. All of the money donated, um, as well as the donations that are donated to us, are strictly for the Lancaster County branch. The donations that are donated to us are used for our animals here, the Lancaster SPCA. <coughs> Thank you to Colleen and Caitlin for their efforts to better the community. For Hemfield Happenings, I'm Kayla Torres. Over the summer, Library Supervisor Kathy Furman was recognized with an honorable achievement. Nathan Leeds spoke with her about it. Dr. Furman, Hemfield's Library Supervisor, was recently inducted into the Liliad Fellowship. She explains what the Liliad Fellowship is and what it means to the school district. The Liliad Project is funded by the Institute of Museum and Library Services and also several publishers as well, publishers as, well as the University of Maryland iSchool. And what is, their mission is to train and engage and get library supervisors and library directors from school libraries all over the country together and get them to think critically about how they can impact student achievement and student success in their school districts. There was an application process, so I had to go through a series of applications and get some references, obviously, from the school district and other people in the school library world, and um, I was chosen through the application. There are only 25 library directors across the country. Um, I'm actually the only one from Pennsylvania who was chosen, so I've been able to get together with library directors from small districts and large districts all over the country. Mrs. Feilmeyer explained some things that Dr. Furman has planned for the future that she has learned throughout the fellowship. There's two things that I believe she specifically is going to help us with at Hemfield. One of them is our project-based learning and assessment work. We're uh, very interested in making sure our students engage in project-based learning and assessment and she is um, interacting and learning with uh, experts from across the country on that. And the second area is in the area of inquiry-based learning. Dr. Furman will always be a part of the Liliad Fellowship and continue to bring ideas to the school district to help improve curriculum. For Hemfield Happenings, I'm Nathan Lead. Prior to the holidays, Alex Weaver discovered how important the district food drive was for the local food bank. The Hemfield School District organized a food drive to benefit a local food pantry here at Zion Evangelical Lutheran Church. We are a supplemental food pantry, so a lot of our clients also receive food stamps. We are not an emergency food pantry. We serve approximately 120 to 125 families a week. It's a big geographic area that we service. The food pantry supply relies mainly on donations. Of the food distribution, we roughly get 12,000 pounds a month that are donated by grocery stores, uh, individuals, different organizations. Hemfield brought in 11,050 pounds of food. It's the largest donation that we get. Your contribution this month is equal to one month of our normal receiving. So you guys did a fantastic job for our food pantry. The Lansville Primary Center used their donation total to incorporate real-life math problems in fun and exciting ways. We compare it to the weight of the entire district so that we can see the percentage, the difference. We also give them some fake word problems with the tons of, of food so that they have to go and investigate how many pounds are in a ton versus how much we raised. It's really to encourage and motivate academics and thinking with math-related problems, as well as tying it to the community's uh, bucket filling project for, for helping with the food drive. Hemfield's annual food drive benefits many members of the community throughout the district every year. For Hemfield Happenings, I'm Alex Weaver. 
Next month, Hemfield Happenings will return with some new crew members. Until then, we leave you with a story about George Curry. Coach Curry spent 46 years coaching high school football, amassing 450 victories and six PIAA championships. More importantly, he left his legacy among both his male and female players that helped him either in the NCAA, the NFL, or other pursuits. Comtech 2 sophomore Julia Campbell traveled to Berwick, Pennsylvania last fall to be part of Coach Curry's final game before his retirement and reflect on his career with his players. Located two hours northeast of Hempfield, the small town of Berwick is mostly known for one thing, football. The winner of three national titles, Berwick's football program has a history of greatness spurred by the hiring of George Curry. 39 seasons at Berwick later, Coach Curry just passed the 450 win mark making him the winningest football coach in Pennsylvania history. Despite recently being diagnosed with ALS, Coach Curry returned to coach yet another playoff caliber team. On the night of the last home game of the season, more than 300 Baroque football alumni returned to their home turf to honor their lifelong mentor. It's a life-changing event when you're a high school kid or a junior high kid, just finally getting to play for the guy that you've heard about and you've seen on the sidelines when you're growing up. You know, he made such a, a a great effort to give us an opportunity to win at football and win at life. I've played other sports, but playing for coach was totally different. It was awesome. The minute you get done playing, you realize that he not only installs all them characteristics to you as a football player, but as a young man. I wasn't going to go to college, but uh, George sat me down in his office and made a phone call and I was there. So I wouldn't have applied to Harvard if it wasn't for coach contacting them and having the recruiters from Harvard come in and ask me to apply. Because I think he prepares you to the opportunity to grow and it's up to us once he got us there. He allowed me to be on the team. Playing football for him gave me a confidence that I didn't have before. So that confidence taking that into college has helped me a lot. I taught you an awful lot. He expected to, once you were told once, you, you knew how to do it. Coach was uh, a leader, a mentor, and just someone you could always look up to. One of the things I remember is he said, the tradition doesn't carry you, you have to carry the tradition. Work hard and good things will happen. The two yards out for the Berwick touchdown. Players have come and gone, but one thing has always remained the same in Berwick, Coach Curry. His impact on his players and the community can be seen by the pride the entire town takes in its football team. For WHHS, I'm Julia Kim.